Hey everyone, welcome back. So I really enjoy doing these videos, not just because I know you guys enjoy them, but also because I really enjoy sharing the science. Each of these food pictures is has a story to tell in regards to the science behind the nutritary nutrition. So let's kick this thing off with the apricot bar. This is actually an awesome treat that one of my clients makes. She does an awesome job, as you can see here, the ingredients. This is Dr. Furman's recipe. However, she tweaked a couple of things. So what she what she does is she she reverses the ratio of dates and apricots. So it's more apricots, and the and what she does is she'll soak the apricots in lemon juice instead of milk to boost the flavor, and then she'll use almond butter instead of cashew butter, uh, which she finds complements the crust. I will tell you, I really enjoy eating these. Um, they're small, but they're but they're nice and, and hearty and uh, dense and but very very nutritious as I, as you just saw and you heard in regards to to the nutrients. I like to use this not just for it's basically a healthy homemade energy bar. Essentially, that's what it is. I use it for training, racing, whatever. Um, all right. So in this next picture, we have a split mung bean soup. So that's a high protein soup, and then you have a Caesar salad, which. I love because it's nothing more than a big bowl of leafy greens, romaine lettuce, and then you're just basically giving it flavor to, so you can enjoy it uh, and know that you're eating something healthy, but it has kind of a traditional Caesar salad flavor. Then you have the raw garlic hummus, which is, I've been doing this for a while now. It's actually my most popular video, which is now up to 565,000 views. Raw garlic is just, there's research on it. I just wish there were more studies because I just think it's really flying under the radar in regards to the benefits. And so I've actually done a couple of videos. One of them was on the gut microbiome in regards to it being a natural antibiotic. And interestingly, it doesn't seem to uh, have a significant impact on our good gut bacteria in terms of wiping them out. It actually uh, seems to target the bad, uh, the pathogenic bacteria and uh, eliminate them, and it actually will boost good gut bacteria. And something I learned is that it also contains a flavonoid known as camphorol. Now, camphorol is found in a variety of foods, but in this case, uh, it's also found in garlic, which I found to be very interesting. So in this next picture, we have a black sesame goji bread. This is, I believe it's Ezekiel bread, or it's uh, Alvarado Street bakery bread. Both breads are flourless breads, which means the particle size is going to be bigger and coarser and it's going to be an intact whole grain which is really great and it's nothing more than I believe I had peanut butter on there and then there's some black sesame sprinkled and then goji bears I got the black sesame seed powder from an um, Asian market and so sesame has sesame which is known to boost fat burning uh, which is fascinating so black sesame I would imagine not only does that but has different benefits due to the fact that it's just a, a, a different uh, hue, uh, color hue. So, and plus, I just wanted to change it up. So I was like, "Wow, this looks interesting." And it actually, tastes quite good. Has like kind of a very nutty, um, almost like uh, I don't know, like gunpowder. Well, it looks like gunpowder, but it has like a very nutty flavor. It's just really good. I enjoyed it uh, with this little recipe. And in this next slide, uh, I just wanted to share this with you guys, just to give you guys some good information. I found this very informative. It's nothing more than polyphenols and their family, polyphenol family, the, the dietary source, and then the compounds within each dietary source. So uh, a, a lot of the pictures in this video are in, in, in encompass a lot of these polyphenols. So I just wanted to share this so you guys can know what foods have certain, po which, which polyphenols and so forth. In this next picture, we have cauliflower kimchi soup. So basically, it's a fermented soup, and then you have a nice uh, cauliflower, a cruciferous vegetable. Then you have jackfruit taco salad. Uh, obviously, I, I had it uh, basically taco shellless. It was just I just made a salad out of it. In this next picture, we have lime mango. So I just simply take mango, cut it up, and just put a little lime juice. This is something I learned from a from a cafe owner once. I thought it was pretty remarkable. I, the flavor was unbelievable. Lime has many benefits on its own. It's going to further lower the glycemic index of the mango. And then mango, come to find out, is not just this fruit that's, you know, uh, tropical fruit. Uh, what, it actually has a lot of benefits, and particularly the polyphenols. And in fact, studies have shown that it tends to turn on a lot of our antioxidant uh, defenses and, and turn off a lot of the inflammatory uh, switches and pathways in our body. So I find that remarkable. In these last two pictures, we have cherry juice. This is Montmorency cherry juice. This goes way back in 2009 when I was in Seattle, Washington for an ACSM science meeting. Montmorency cherry juice, the red tart cherry juice was was a big 
uh, talk of the conference uh, when it, in terms of the, the nutrition seminars. And I will tell you the benefits that I've uh, noticed. One, it's actually a natural source of melatonin. It's, it's an actual exogenous source of melatonin. That's pretty remarkable. And I will tell you, I actually will have literally a shot of this. So this is a concentrated bottle. Um, they also serve, uh, they also have like uh, the, at Whole Foods 365, it's just the juice. And it's actually a lot less expensive. I'll just usually have like a quarter cup or half a, a cup because I understand that it's a concentrated fruit juice. The sugar content is going to be higher. And I don't normally drink fruit juices, but this is one of the few that I do drink. I just find the research is too strong to deny it. And regarding the availability of Montmorency cherries, they don't seem to be that highly available, at least where, I, where I'm, at least where I live, because I know that they do grow in Michigan, but it's they're they're hard to come across in grocery stores. You, you'll see Rainier cherries, Bing cherries, sweet cherries, but you're, it's going to be hard to find fresh red, red tart cherries. Plus. The juice is going to concentrate a lot of the a lot of the uh, beneficial substances in the cherry juice, and if you exercise prudence in drinking it, in other words, not drinking too much, just a little shot, I think the benefit to the benefit ratio is going to be uh, highly in our favor. So, in this last picture, we have broccoli juice. This is nothing more than fresh broccoli and lemon, and that's it. And I just put it through the juicer, strain it, and what I like about this is broccoli contains sulforaphane, and then it also is a natural mouse statin inhibitor. And mouse statin is a protein which has been shown to uh, be associated with protein breakdown or muscle loss, right? So there could be a little bit of science behind the bodybuilder diet of, you know, chicken and broccoli, although I don't eat chicken, but obviously the vegetable, the broccoli. Uh, broccoli is a pretty potent muscle building vegetable. And as I just shared with that science, I think that's, that's evident. So anyway, that's it, you guys. Uh, hopefully you found this informative. Uh, inspirational and motivational and I, I enjoy doing this I enjoy sharing the information and the science so without so with that I'd like to thank you for taking the time and till next time